Welcome. My name is John Milbury, and I am excited to be with you today. And during our session, I promise to increase your understanding of our new NC shop floor programmer role. I'm going to reveal the different personas, business scenarios that this role was designed to address. And finally, I'm going to demonstrate the new user interface as it appears in our new shop floor machining application. So hang on and let's get started. Shop floor machining is a first Delmia NC programming application under 5,000 US dollars. Now it combines hand-picked two and three axis milling machine capabilities into a single application that is both purposeful and value driven. The ability to four and five axis preposition and the ability to simulate toolpath machine kinematics is also included. Of course, as with all our dummy machining roles, wire EDM programming is also included. The NC shop floor programmer role is available on premise and on cloud and may be sold by all DASO system resellers. So why do we create the NC shop floor programmer role? Well, there are three reasons. The first is for the small machine shop or single user who is currently a SolidWorks customer. The second is for the shop floor machinist who needs to create G-code programs on the shop floor for simple parts, you know, maybe a clamp or a tooling fixture. And they need to do this quickly rather than wait on their manufacturing engineering department. The third reason is for the shop floor personnel who need to review already existing NC programmers from their manufacturing department before they run the job. Now, this capability is highly coveted by shop floor personnel who wish to review multi-axis and mill turn simulations, and the new shop floor programmer role gives them this capability without having to purchase a more expensive multi-axis machining app just to review these types of simulations. So what does the shop floor machining app look like? Let's start with the machining wizard because it still contains the same capabilities that you've grown to depend on for rapid systematic workflow creation. Moving down to the action bar, we have three main section tabs used to create your tool paths. The prismatic machining section tab contains prismatic area and gives us the added capability to detect and machine leftover material in corners and channels with a smaller tool. Profile contouring is also included, as well as pocketing point to point, curve following, and finally probing for multi points, corners, slots and ribs, um, and holes or pins. So the surface machining section tab contains roughing, which can rough out an entire part. Sweeping allows you to create a finishing or semi finishing operation that can machine a roughed out part in vertical parallel planes. Z-level machining operations are finishing or semi-finishing operations that machine the entire part by parallel horizontal planes that are perpendicular to the tool axis. Advanced finishing is a finishing operation that combines vertical Z-level passes with horizontal contour-driven passes. Deburring is an exciting new capability that can automatically detect sharp edges on finished parts and then chamfer these edges. The Axial Machining section tab retains all its advanced capabilities to auto hole search and create axial machinable features. Local and global feature recognition are retained as well as the ability to create machining patterns and then reference it in a drilling operation. And finally, automatic pattern creation allows users to automatically create patterns from existing machinable axial features. The rest of the axial feature lineup includes drilling, spot drilling, boring, axial finishing, T-slotting, tapping, thread milling, circular milling, and sequential drilling. So let's take a moment to watch the new deburring feature in action. Here is the capability that's included in Machine Shop Programmer automated two and three axis deburring. For our multi-axis machining applications, we've included automatic multi-axis deburring. Now please note that this multi-axis capability is not included in shop floor machining, but the technology is still beyond awesome and it's worth a quick look. 
So we have done some amazing enhancements to the user interface for the activities process view. Whew, can't say enough about that. We can sort our default view by operations, giving us a streamlined view of our roughing, profile contouring, Z-level, sweeping, and our axial operations. We can sort by tool, allowing us to quickly cut through the clutter of P prints and machining instructions and other activities to view just the tools and their associated operations. Next, let's expand the screen real estate of our view. The Attribute Manager allows us to show and place in columns critical machining information such as type, computed, tool number, cutting diameter, kinematic status, corner radius, maximum depth of cut, status, and lock toolpath indicators. Now this spreadsheet configuration view can be saved and recalled for later use. So let's create a default configuration added to our existing list and then save the configuration with its active attributes. We can now quickly and easily recall any spreadsheet configuration view from the list, such as times and feed rates, tool information, operation status, machining strategy, and now my favorite, of course, their, our default view. Next, let's pre-select our tool corner radius column and select our filter manager. Notice how all the column values are presented in the manager so that we can show or hide just the values we are interested in, such as this uh, two millimeter corner radius. Now let's select our tool diameter column and again, we can sort and view just our 18 millimeter end mills. We can select our activities column and perform a text search on any string we wish and the results will be highlighted across all roles that meet that selection criteria. So let's reclaim our graphic real estate for a moment. And this is probably a good time to mention that any of the tree views, such as the activities process view, can be undocked and moved to another monitor. In this mode, we can easily keep our spreadsheet configuration view maximized, yet still interact with our graphics on our primary monitor. Due to the large number of machining values that an NC programmer must track at any given time, this type of dual monitor usage combined with a maximized spreadsheet configuration view is a best-in-class setup for daily production work. Next, let's take a look at our new help picture interface for a simple sweeping operation. Let's start on the machining strategy tab. For machining direction, help pictures result in a more intuitive understanding of the differences between a zigzag and a you know, one-way tool path. Machining tolerance is easy to understand as the maximum allowable deviation a tool can take from a part surface. Discretization shows us the maximum allowable distance before outputting another tool path location. Radial strategies, such as a constant step over value or maximum allowable cusp height, are easy to understand. And the step over side makes much more sense when explained by the help pictures. Radial depth is easily explained by a set of three help pictures giving the user options for levels, cut depth, and total depth. Secondary help pictures guide the user to the number of levels on the maximum cut depth. Next come a series of pictures describing the desired machining zones that could include all, just frontal walls, just lateral walls, or possibly only various horizontal zones. Island Skip reveals an animated picture of the tool path as the differences between Island Skip checked versus unchecked. This is one of my favorite. Feed rate length can also be specified as well as how a tool path is modified if a high speed milling is selected. So let's simulate our material removal for the sweeping tool path based on our selected strategy settings. Using the new interface in shop for machining, let's create a roughing operation on our part. We begin by creating a new manufacturing program. Next, we select our Haas rotary axis accessory 
and issue a machine instruction that commands our rotary device to zero degrees. We can now choose the roughing command from our action bar, and this prompts us to select an existing tool assembly from our resource configuration view. After we select the tool, we can align the tool axis normal to our machining direction at zero degrees. We can also type in the IJK values or dynamically rotate the tool to the desired rotary head position. Next, we are directed to select the part to machine and now all mandatory requirements are complete. We may now add additional control parameters if desired, because our part clearance is very close to the chuck jaws, we might want to check and use check surfaces to help us monitor for collisions. And we can also select the bottom Z plane to control our final roughing depth. Finally, we can choose an option for circular interpolation if desired. So computing our toolpath is quick, and after each machining operation, the intermediate remaining stock is automatically calculated and stored for further operations. If we wish to simulate with machine kinematics, we can simply select an option to do so. Let's replay the simulation, but with full toolpath machine kinematics active. Design Part Comparison is a tool that calculates how much stock remains on a finished part. Now, as a programmer, this is one of my favorite tools. In this example, we have selected the green color as within our finished part tolerance. You know, green is good. Note that we may stop and start the simulation to do multiple comparisons at any time during the simulation. Let's take a look at the remaining release plan for the new UI and machining views. The new UI first appeared on R2020X within our Wire EDM application. Now, currently on R2021X FD03, we have seen this new functionality added to shop floor machining, and we will continue to see improvements and enhancements through FD05. For R2022X, these new UI and machining view enhancements will appear in all our milling applications, finally concluding on subsequent functional deployments of our 2022X for all turning applications. Now, at the beginning of our presentation, I mentioned that one of the three key business drivers behind the creation of the NC Shop Floor Programmer role was our customer's request to be able to view multi-axis simulations on the shop floor before running the job. By the virtue of the 3D Experience platform, shop personnel and the manufacturing engineering department are now connected through a common platform. This allows the flexibility for the shop floor machining app to open and review any programs created by their manufacturing engineering department. There's no need for a secondary type of application or special file types or containers to make this happen. The shop floor machining app can open, review, and simulate any Delmia NC program, including this five axis impeller. One last very important thing I must mention before I go, please take a moment to visit and interact with your Delmia fabrication community where users, resellers, and DASO system employees meet to discuss the latest news about Delmia fabrication products. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation, and I hope I was able to keep my promise of increasing your understanding of this new purposeful and value-driven role called the NC Shop Floor Programmer. Thank you, and I hope to see you soon.